That was very close at my crutch. Oh, woo! These snakes are on fire this morning. Oh, he just bit himself trying to get my hand. This is the Venom Diaries, where we milk Australia's deadliest snakes for their venom to create anti-venom that saves over 300 lives every single year. G'day everyone, welcome back to Venom Diaries. Today is an exciting one. We're gonna be milking brown snakes and I've got the POV camera that's gonna be on the hat here for uh, some close-ups. And then we're gonna jump out to what we call Conservation Arc here at the Australian Reptile Park and we're going to look at our broad-headed snake breeding program because they are critically endangered. So we've got to save them, all right? So to start off with, Let's get some brown snakes out. I've got the milking gear ready, pinners set up. I'm gonna get Chloe to put this on my hat. Alrighty, so this is what it looks like with the camera on. So when I'm doing this and jumping around with brown snakes launching at me, uh, you see what I see. All right, so let's go. Alrighty, so big fella. It's actually shed skin. Hello, mate. What's going on? This is very big. Oi! Very big brown snake. Hey. Oi, oi, oi. Stop that. Alrighty, so. Oi. <laughs> it's a little jumpy this morning. It's been um definite change in the weather. Temps. Oi! Temps have uh, dropped a lot, but. We keep the snakes nice and warm in here, so... Oh, mate, settle down. This guy's off his head today. We do keep the temps in here as natural as we possibly can. Settle down. This guy is giving me some curry today. You will not get the better of me, mister. Alrighty, mate. Straight on there. Gotcha. Woo! <laughs> this guy is definitely one of our most dangerous snakes. Get him on there. Oh, nice bit of venom coming out. Lovely. Oh, good yield. Look at that. Over half of a pet there. That would certainly ruin your day. So that's first one done. I'll tell you what, he got the heart rate going. So he's gonna go in here and he's gonna get his enclosure cleaned out straight after this. Fresh shed, you beauty. Alrighty, so let's go round two here. Bilbo Cam. Holy Von Schnitzel. These guys are on fire today. All right, so, another nice chunky big South East Queensland snake, really nice belly on him. He's normally a bit more defensive than this, so good for me if he's not trying to bite me. You beauty, so you can see these pipettes are actually longer. When we get them and we just cut them down because obviously I couldn't get that over the fang. All right. So down there. Nice. Not great deal from you, mister, today, but that's all right. How's this? Oh mate, did a big turd across my leg. Alrighty, so let's get the hook, get another snake. I'm on a roll. I'll try and knock out the uh, naughty ones early on. Who's in here? Hello. Oi. Alright. Mate. <laughs> oh. 
Wow. That was very close at my crutch. Oh! <laughs> Woo! <laughs> These snakes are on fire this morning. Oh, he just bit himself trying to get my hand. Mate. All right, settle down, mister. Oh. <laughs> gotcha. My goodness, that was hectic. So this guy, I know this guy's missing a fang on the other side at the moment. I'm just gonna do this side. Good bit of venom there. Holy heck. All right, you, Mr. Naughty, back in there. I didn't even explain what I was supposed to do then. So I was meant to explain with that snake why I pipette while I use these. Um, I have explained it in the past, but just for new people to the channel and the page, because the brown snake fangs are so small, I'll give you an example here. Like they're only a couple mil in length. So, and only about that much hangs out of the jaw. So I put that over and their yields are so small. So I capitalize on maximum venom by doing that, it's obviously a bit more dangerous, but yeah, I'll just get that bit more venom. Whew, man, my heart rate's pumping. I'm gonna get one more snake out, um, and then we're gonna go and have a look at broad-headed snakes. This fella here normally gives me a fair bit of curry, so we'll see. Yeah, he's a pretty decent sized snake too. We'll see how he's gonna react today. He's not really doing anything. To be honest, that's actually quite surprising. No, oh, he's looking like he's going to explode. Yeah, there we go. <laughs> All right, so, and I've just got an encounter coming in at the moment. How you going, guys? So, uh, this guy's doing the um, 9 a.m. venom encounter. So, just bear with me a sec. I'm just going to get this snake restrained. Wait. On there, like so. Right, O'Reilly, you guys are walking walk through. You don't mind being on camera? Just filming for Venom Diaries. It's a YouTube channel we run here, and uh, you've come perfect timing. So I'll do the milking right now for you. So, preparing the brown snakes at the moment. Um, so it's different to the vile technique we use with the other snakes. This guy's just replacing a fang at the moment on the other side there. So, ooh, it's hard getting it on when they're biting, there we go. So you don't get much from the brown snakes, it's only a no. tiny amount. Mm -hmm. But um, what they lack in volume, they make up for in toxicity, that's for sure. Yeah. <laughs> so um, one drop of this can kill about 90 blokes. Yeah, so it's really wild stuff. And yeah, that's an average size brown snake. Um, it's about, probably not quite six foot yet, but yeah, not far off it. And yeah, wild caught one. But Riley's gonna tell you all about the Venom program. And I'll have another snake coming through in a sec as well. Might do one more snake. All sorts going on in here this morning. The sparkers are in here. We've got cleaning going on. Where are you, mister? There we go. Wait. Yeah, it's crazy. I've got um, Eastern Browns here that are like jet black in colour. Oh, weird, isn't it? Yeah. Terrible, terrible name. <laughs> oh, I've seen the, the banding and stuff? Banding. Yeah. It's wild, man. So I've seen clutches that half the clutch will be banded and half the clutch won't be. Weird, isn't it? Yeah. Oh, that's a... So you can see there, that's almost half a pet. Oh, yeah. That was just from one thing. Wow. What do you reckon of the Venom Rooms? Love it. Yeah? <laughs> good good stuff. Alright. So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna head over to Conservation Arc and we're gonna check out broad-headed snakes. Alrighty guys, welcome to 
Conservation Arc, all right? So this is our breeding facility here, right on site at the Australian Reptile Park, and it's part of Aussie Arc, which is our sort of sister foundation um, for critically endangered animals. Um, and I'm gonna tell you more about Aussie Arc very soon, but I've got to keep that one in the bag, can't tell you too much. But I'm gonna show you broad-headed snakes today. Got me coffee, because uh, it's been a big morning. So yeah, we've got a stack, uh, mainly reptiles and amphibians here. So we've got three species of turtles, all endangered. A couple of species of frogs, again, endangered, fighting to save them. So here at Conservation Arc, we keep the animals that we can't really keep up in the Barrington Tops where our main Aussie Arc breeding facility is. So we've got a bunch of turtles, there's three species of turtles, a couple of species of frogs, a snake, which we're about to have a look at, a broadheaded snake, and then a couple of mammals. Um, so I won't go into too much detail with the other species, but I do have something in the bag which we'll talk about soon in the next few weeks. But let's have a look. Here it is, the broad-headed snakes. Have a bit of a look at the facility outside here. So this is intensive breeding in here. So, you know, people that come to the park can actually see um, the snakes, the enclosures, uh, and what we've got going on in regards to the breeding program. Because these guys, are, their future in the wild is looking bleak, all right? So let's go in and we'll get right into detail. Alrighty, welcome. So this is like biosecurity and quarantine in here because these are snakes caught from the wild for this project and the juveniles will eventually, that we breed, will go back to the wild. So yeah, we've got, we, we got a license to collect 20 adults. We've collected 17 so far, which we did last year. Um, I was down there for one of the collections. It's, it's really disheartening when you go down there because they're found on the Sydney sandstone regions from sort of south to Nara up to sort of just northwest of, of here on the Central Coast. And they only sit on these sandstone ridges that face to the west, right? At a certain time of the year, they're there. In the summer when it's too hot, they duck into the forest and they sort of in the trees and behind bark and so on. But most of the time, they're on the sandstone. They're, they're definitely a sandstone specialist. But what's happened is people have been for the last sort of, I don't know, 50 decades or so, have been out collecting the sandstone rocks from the bushland there, right? So this is a man-made one to replicate that we're actually trying to get these out into the field from because they've got no shelter left right that's a big problem and also poaching has been a massive issue for them as well so this is actually mock rock like it's a fake it's trust me it's heavy it feels like you're holding sandstone but you see they they only sit under select rocks right these flat surfaces and it needs to be sandstone on sandstone it can't be you know sandstone to dirt or sandstone to grab it's got to be sandstone to sandstone and they find a little edge that they get in under and they curl themselves up and the sandstone sort of holds the heat that they're required to uh, regulate their body temperature. But anyway, people have been collecting it for decades, so there's not much left. Um, this is a piece that was handed in by a member of the public, but you can see it's got that edge there. So snakes would have been going in under here and sitting under that, right? They're being collected for bush rock in people's backyards and, you know, they make retaining walls out of it and so on. So that's a big problem. Uh, and poaching. So they sell for a lot of money overseas. So it's estimated like in the area we collected from south of Sydney, um, that there's under 200 individuals left in the world. That's it. And that's a big part of their population, their home range. Uh, so that's really concerning. So we went out and we collected a bunch last year. It was, you know, it took about four or five trips. And like, I'm talking like I was with Liz and Jesse one day and we walked, it was 25 kilometers. And I'm talking, you're walking through like this crazy thick understory because the fires went through there, right? In 2019, early 2020 and decimated the forest. And now it's all come back. It's so thick. You're literally just walking through tea tree and wattle just getting cut apart. And then boom, you're on top of these sandstone cliffs, right? And they're like a hundred meters to the bottom and the snakes are right on the edge. So we're just walking them all day flipping you know flipping hundreds of rocks and i think on the first day we found two that was it so that's bad and then the day three we found another two so we kept we kept two of the four we caught and brought them back for this program so i'm going to give you a look at what they look like they are a highly venomous critter um you know definitely quite capable of killing a person so we specifically designed these hide boxes for them to feel like they're in a crevice um and so i don't think he's in that nope but yeah so if you look through that it sort of gives them that feeling that they're going in under sandstone even though it's timber it's they still seem to like it so thanks Haley's dad for for making these now they are usually a really defensive little species because they're only little like that's an adult right there 
tiny, right? About 65 centimetres, maybe not even. They sort of max out at about 80. Um, you know, I've heard of them getting to a metre, but I've never seen it myself yet. And yeah, beautiful pattern on them. They've got a really broad head, hence the name broad-headed snake. Uh, and they're in the genus of the hoplo snakes. So that's like these guys, pale-headed snakes, uh, and also Stevens banders, alrighty. Um, and yeah, highly venomous. It's wild to think that a snake this size is actually capable of killing a person, all right? Really fast acting venom. You'll sort of, you, you basically you go sleepy really quick without a bandage on and you pass out. It's such a blood pressure drop in from um, the, the effects of the venom. But yeah, they can treat the bites with tiger snake anti-venom. There was a bite, you guys would have seen on one of those recent episodes, we had the care flight doctors. One of the care flight doctors was telling me about an incident they responded to in the Blue Mountains, because you do get these, ooh, you do get these guys in the Blue Mountains where someone was canyoning and got bitten by one of these. It was on the rock basking. Oh, he just bit himself. It was on the rock basking and he thought it was a diamond python and he picked it up to move it out of the way and it bit him and um, he was in all sorts really quickly. So yeah, there have been multiple recorded bites now where people think these guys are baby diamond pythons. Um, so I've said it before, I'll say it again. If you see a snake in the bush, don't think, you know, if you're not a professional, do not try and ID it, just leave it alone. Don't muck with it, leave it for the professionals, all right? Move around it, move away, whatever you need to do to avoid that snake. So this one here is one of our very lovely little females that we have. And she, when, when we brought them in, right, we cooled them, you know, matched their wild temps, straight, like temperature straight away. Um, and we noticed the females were looking interested in breeding. So, we put a male in with her and bang, straight away they started mating. And they just mated flat out for like three or four days. We pulled him, they're a live bearing species, so they don't lay eggs. That's much longer gestation, I'm talking like four and a half months. We watched her just get bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger. And then boom, coming one morning, four cute as little juvenile broadheaded snakes. So I'm gonna grab one out for you. They're so small, we've got to keep them in Chinese containers to start off with. So we got, they'll go into these enclosures as they get a little bit bigger, but they're so little, we've been keeping them in Chinese containers until they're big enough to go into the enclosure without <laughs> escape hazard, because they're literally so little, all right? Um, and baby snakes like this stress really bad. So when you put them in a bigger type enclosure, they're super nervous, but have a go at that. Isn't that super cool? Now that is the one of the first babies bred for this life-saving program. These guys are about two and a half months old, all right? And he's already doubled in size, he's eating. In the wild, he'd literally just be feeding on skinks and geckos, but most don't make it to adult because they get picked off by kookaburras and other birds of prey, lizards, but big lizards and, um, and even other snakes. So yeah, he their clutches are only really small too, but we love them. But yeah, this is, founder for the species so you know this is going to be a, a, eventually a huge insurance population because at the moment like we can't even look at releasing them that because a people are still poaching them and b this, there's not enough sandstone rocks for them so we're going to be building sandstone rocks we're looking at loading up helicopters and going onto the remote ridges and just putting these artificial sandstone rocks right along the edges so they've got habitat again aussie ark has also now uh they're funding the what do we call it the um there's an indigenous ranger down there now we're we're, we're, we're funding um his wage so that's really special and there's a really good video on this on the aussie ark pages so definitely um jump on tony put that together it's a really nice video and it shows you uh, the habitat that we're in but also i'm going to be going down there later this year and surveying maybe collecting so i will definitely take you guys along with me but yeah i really wanted to show you this is um this is very close to my heart this this project you know obviously i'm a snake lover and you know these things are just going to disappear at the face of the planet if we don't do anything about it so make sure you check out aussie arcs pages um the facebook insta and um and, and so on but that's going to be it for this episode i don't even know what episode this is so <laughs> i'm losing count anyway um thanks so much for the support um you know the drill like share subscribe and i'll see you for the next episode